Welcome to Freezing Real Podcast. I'm your host, Bridget, along with my husband, Chris. Weekly, we talk about being parents, what happened that week. It's basically our therapy session to vent out everything that we went through. We are boy parents. We have three boys, Enzo, Rhett, and Arlo. And if you'd like to get to know us a little bit better, you can check out our website, freezermilk.com, or follow us on Instagram at Freezer Milk Podcast. We also have YouTube and TikTok, Freezer Milk. Thanks so much for listening, and we hope you enjoy. Welcome back, everybody. Are you not going to say welcome back? <laughs> Gosh. Happy holidays. <laughs> you are just funky monkey. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's been a... Not a terrible week, I don't feel like. No, not at all. We went back to our normal schedule with our nanny, which has made things a little bit more. Yeah, the but, end of last week she ended up not feeling well, so. Yeah, she, she well, she, yeah, she had the week off, and then. And she came back, and she was like, you could just, you could just tell she was sick, like it, she wasn't faking or anything like that. No, like, she was, she was feeling good. Poor lady. But we went, we did the first experience at the aquarium with the Rhett and Arlo. Yeah, that wasn't bad. They were actually pretty good day on Friday. Mm-hmm. It was interesting because Rhett, we like haven't really clued him into the fact that like the stroller is not necessarily the only option for him because we we make him get in the stroller <laughs> everywhere we go because he's a runner. He reminds me of like we had a dog years ago and that dog, if you open the door, would just bolt. Like he loved life. He loved our house. He was spoiled rotten. But he would just get so excited about exploring the world and would bolt. He was a runner. Yeah, but he had no common sense or, you know, fear. <laughs> and I kind of feel like that's Rhett. <laughs> oh, absolutely. He's a runner. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, like, we never take him out of the stroller. Yeah. We're just, hey, because we don't want him to realize walking is an option because then he'll never want to go in the stroller and he'll throw, like, massive fits about it. Yeah. But at the aquarium, it's it's kind of a controlled space. There, parts of it are pretty, like... It would be hard for him to get out. Yeah. Parts of it are pretty controlled space. It's, you know, more narrow hallways with, a, like, you know, fish tanks on each side versus a big, wide open space. So we let him out the stroller. And at first, he was really, really good. <laughs> and then he just got wild. Yeah, he started off strong. And then he realized, oh, fuck, I can just run from... All right. I can run from mom and dad and have freedom and, like, be excited about everything and just bolt here and there. And so then he went back in the stroller. <laughs> you know they have, like, dog parks that are all, like, gated off. And have, right. Like, kid parks that are gated off. I don't understand. So it's Why interesting. Are parks, parks gated? In the UK, I think it's UK. Germany, Switzerland, one of those. If we have any UK listeners out there, respond on our uh, YouTube channel and let us know when this episode goes on the YouTube channel about, I believe one of them does, like, gate off their playgrounds. Which is, well, I don't understand why they don't do it more often here. It makes total f- sense that you would want to do that. Yeah. So that, like... It's a controlled space. Right. That way, like, kids couldn't necessarily just bolt Especially in Arizona, like, our playgrounds are really close to the street. Yeah, like, the ones in our neighborhood, I don't even like taking them over there. No, it's so, like, it's it's a couple of steps at most from the playground to the street. Mm-hmm. And he's quick now. He, he can is, run. He is very quick. But, yeah, so he, he went back in the stroller at the aquarium, but he seemed to really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It was really cool, because we've never... I think we all really enjoyed it. Yeah, we've never taken him there before. And I used to take Enzo, and Enzo was about Rhett's age. And I remember Enzo liking it. We just had kind of forgotten about it. Because it's not that close to our house. It's like a 40-minute drive. But he really, really enjoyed it. So I think we're going to take him more often now. We ended up doing a, a season pass for the year. Yeah, I'm going to get him a leash. That's probably a good idea, realistically. But it was cool to see him, like see fish up close like big they had big lake ones there too that are you know well, huge something we kind of forget about is especially going through you know covid the pandemic and all that stuff um he's been raised at you know essentially at home yeah he, he, he didn't get the luxury of experiencing all the outdoor stuff Mm-mm. that you know a lot of kids before his time before covid got to I mean, he's definitely a pa- pandemic baby. 110%. Yeah. So. Like, he's really... He hasn't been out and about in the world a whole lot. And yeah. part of probably why he's a runner, because he hasn't been out and about in the world a whole lot. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was cool to see his... 
first experience there, and it's going to be really cool when we decide eventually to take him for a second to watch him, like, recognize, like, I know where we are and be excited about that. Because yeah. that's something, like, he'll start to establish, like, I know this building, I know this entrance, I know, I know what's coming, and this is exciting because I get to go see lots of cool things. So that part of it will be really cool because I remember as the more I took Enzo when he was around that age, he started to get really excited, like, when we got down to the floor that had the jellyfish and like the Nemo, like the clownfish and stuff like that, he would get really excited on future visits when we got close to that because he knew what was coming. Oh, it's, it's all fun and games and stuff when you are able to take him out, but when you take him to a public library and lose yeah. your child, then... Yeah. I was showing you, there's like, they have this like cute little tunnel at the aquarium, like for kids to like play in and like, I like lost Enzo in it one time. Yeah. When he was little, so we always like. That's terrifying. Oh, okay. I have like kids of my own. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Just when you lose sight of like, we get worried in our own house. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine like out in public if you lose sight of your kid and you're like, where did you go? Yeah, especially at that age because they still just have no real concept of danger. No, or I mean, anything. I mean, the dude likes to climb on our freaking kitchen table, <sighs> right on top of it. He doesn't. He just doesn't learn like. He was doing something at the table today. He was sitting on the chair, and he, like, was leaning down, and he popped up, and he bumped the back of his head on the table because he was too close to it, like, the lip of the table. And he was kind of, you know, like, ow, and he, like, shook it off. He did it again, like, ten minutes later. I was like, you, you really aren't the kid that learns, like, oh, I shouldn't do this. Like, what? he just gets so excited in one track mind. What's with him and, like, going up to a wall and headbutting it? That's the weirdest shit in the world. It's attention. He does. He straight up goes up to it and headbutts it. He did it tonight because I was holding Arlo while we were sleeping, and like Rhett really wanted me to hold him. Yeah. And like kept pointing, he like straight up went to that wall. He just... wanted, yeah, because I wasn't giving him the time of day, and neither were you. Mm -mm. And so in his mind, he was like, "Oh well, when I'm hurt. this is this is terrible." But he's like, "When I'm hurt, I get their attention." So he walks up to the wall and headbutts it. Doesn't it make you feel kind of bad as a parent that our child's resorting to self-inflicting harm? harm <laughs> already? Like, to get our attention. You're two years old, bro. Oh, God. We need to correct like, this. I, I work from home. I see you daily. Oh, it's God. not like I just shut my door and shut you out for eight hours, and ten hours a day. <laughs> and, like, we were standing right there. I was just like, nobody can't hold you. And he was kitchen. mad about you're it. The kitchen. I was cooking. You were holding the baby. Like, what were we supposed to do? <sighs> But anyhow, so yeah, we got to do the aquarium, and that was really amazing. Yeah. And I'm excited to, like, see how that continues to go. Arlo gained some weight this week. Yeah, I know. You were really, really nervous about that whole thing. Oh, gosh. I mean, I'm still stressed about it. Like, we had the pediatrician appointment tomorrow, and he's still, like, I think 10 percentile. And at his last appointment, he was... 30? 39th percentile. So he's dropped two bands, I think, which is where they might get nervous and start to like have conversations with us. But some really cool things have happened this week yeah. in regards to that. So if you are a mom and um, you are choosing to do breastfeeding or pumping, like you're, you're making milk, there are so many resources out there available to people that people just don't know about. So my breastfeeding center that I love and adore if you're in Arizona, Arizona Breastfeeding and Medicine uh, Wellness up in Scottsdale, is flipping amazing. They are great from everything from latching to, you know, doing weighted feeds. We started doing weighted feeds with Arlo. So I would go in, they would weigh him, and then I'd nurse him. They'd weigh him again to see, like, how much milk is he actually pulling out when he's eating, Um latch issues everything the tongue ties that we've had have all been done there but something that they recently offered to me because I explained like hey like I'm really worried about this I got sick and my milk supply like plummeted and the quality of my milk tanked like it looked like skim milk it was like blue water it was terrible so they gave some suggestions as far as trying some like lactation brownies um starting some moringa you know supplements to help out getting my fluid level up a ton more um, and then some suggestions around like doing pumping and bottles and nursing 
so that we like hopefully can encourage Arlo to still nurse, but then making sure he's not hungry by doing bottles that are pumped milk so we can like make sure he's getting a lot of milk. And my midwives had suggested when I was talking with them about it too, which I love the like Gilbert family birth center midwife group. They're amazing. They suggested they're like, Hey, like electrolytes, like stop trying to hydrate with water, just pound electrolytes as much as you can. So that's what you've been doing. So I've been pounding electrolytes and I went with the greater than brand of electrolytes because they're meant to like help with lactation because they have a, um, like an oat powder in them and oats supposed to like help your milk supply do better. So did all of those things, <laughs> been doing a bunch of stuff and the breastfeeding center has this machine, which I'm going to butcher the name of, but it's a cream, cream mat crit, um, machine that analyzes the calories and fat in your breast milk. So you give them like a one ounce sample of breast milk and they run it through this machine and it tells them how many calories are in one ounce and uh, the fat in one ounce. And to put it in perspective, so your average formula has between 20 to 22 calories per ounce of formula. And in my case with Arlo, like weight being dropping, my milk, you know, was really, really not good quality content. Um, it's gotten a lot better. We were concerned the pediatrician, rightfully so, might say, hey, like we need to switch him to formula because he needs to be on a, a higher calorie, um, you know, supplement. They tested my breast milk today and it came back at 27.6 calories per ounce which is like better than formula. So it's just a matter of getting him enough volume of it. But the stuff I'm doing seems to be working as far as it has drastically improved the quality of my breast milk where it's back to like being high fat, high calorie again. But it's just crazy. I was talking to somebody about it and they're like, first off, that machine exists? Like who knew? Second of all, that is freaking amazing that that's available to you. Right. Like, I didn't know a breastfeeding center yeah. could do that. Like, with, think about, like, with Enzo. Like, all of this stuff you didn't know as a first-time mother. Oh, my God. And, yeah. like, all of the stuff, all of the knowledge that you have gained and all the people you have learned just solely from, you know, doing a little bit of research and meeting these people and them giving you input and the struggles. And it really just kind of opens you up to everything. It's just amazing. And it just shows you how much... Parents are not given the education and resources about, especially about like breastfeeding. Like, I feel like that is such a, like, stuck in the dark ages education yeah. that happens for people when they are, especially like first time parents, they're just kind of told like, oh, hey, like your, your child might have a bad latch. Um, just work on it. But no one's like, hey. Breastfeeding, yeah, and it's going to make your nipples bleed. Right. Like, no one's like, hey, Just bear through it. breastfeeding shouldn't hurt. Even as a first time mom, if your nipples are hurting, you have a bad latch and you need to see someone and not just tough it out. And if you have concerns about like weight gain issues, they can test your fucking milk. Make like, sure that it's enough. Yeah. They can do, they did a blood sample on me yesterday too. I asked them to check my prolactin levels because um, prolactin is like, what allows your body to make breast milk and then if my prolactin is low they can offer some things to me that i can do to like help raise my prolactin levels but all of this i feel like nobody's aware of at all it's so you, you weren't i wasn't like it's so bananas to me that all of this is out there it's able to be done and it's just the education of it and the knowledge to pass out to people about like, hey, like these are things you can do. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's really impressive. I mean, especially over the last week. The last week you have like turned a huge corner. I know you've been suffering with being sick. You were having trouble with liquids and you know, keeping hydrated and stuff like that. And you were seeing issues. It was very obvious with him. He was almost like emaciated. In a way. <sighs> it was hard to watch. Um, he just wasn't getting what he needed, but you started following pretty much all these, you did some research, but you also said, you know, kind of followed what these doctors or these nurses were saying. And, um, now it's kind of turned around. So that's good. 
Yeah. I feel like my volume definitely still needs to increase on my milk. And, like, he's definitely not super interested in nursing right now. Like, he just wants a bottle a bottle because it's, it's more consistent. Which is ironic because with Rhett, you <laughs> complained constantly because he only wanted to breastfeed and wouldn't take a bottle. I was joking with our nanny today. I was like, I was like, watch Arlo end up being an exclusive pumping baby where like he only wants pumped milk in a bottle and won't like actually nurse. Yeah. I was like, because Rhett was an exclusive breastfed baby and refused a bottle. Enzo was a hybrid and would take anything. Didn't give a shit. Yep. <laughs> like the most chill baby ever was like, whatever, boob, bottle. Hot okay. milk, cold milk, warm. I don't care. But I'll just take it. It's fine. <laughs> like, so I'm like, watch Arlo end up being like a pumping baby, which exclusively pumping is hard. Like, it can be challenging to maintain your milk supply that way, but we'll cross that bridge if we get to it. Yeah. I mean, you're doing a lot of lot of scheduled pumping, so yeah. you have a schedule to it. So. Yeah. I'm trying but to. I think that helps you. You put together I don't you know, like an app or something that kind of tells you when to stop the pump. Yeah, kind of. I kind of, I try to just do it anytime we give him a bottle. I need to pump. pump so that my boobs know. Like, but at least you can. Oh, have, he ate. At least, at least when he eats, you can now pass him to me and give me the bottle. Yeah, and I can sit with him and feed him while you do what you need to do. You know? Yeah, which is not something you were able to do with Red. Mm mm. So. No, it's definitely. I'm intrigued to see like how it goes with Arlo. Like, will he end up going back to like it's interesting because he if he's asleep he will nurse successfully and has no problem with it because he nurses all night um well not like all night he nurses during the night and then like if he's napping and like starts to try to like nuzzle to like want to like latch i'll latch him and he'll just nurse while he's napping and like he doesn't fight it but if he's awake he's like "Mm, (laughs) no i don't want to fight for milk to come out because it it doesn't flow fast right now. It's yeah. it's a slow flow compared to the bottle. But it's interesting that if he's asleep, he doesn't care. And he'll do it. But if he's awake, he's like impatient as I'll get out. He gets it from his dad. I don't know. I think you just kind of have to adapt and overcome these things. It's, yeah. We've been working through this for a while now. Like, what, a month? Mm-hmm. You know? And he's been struggling for a month. And he's finally getting into uh, some sort of schedule with his bowel movements. And, he's, you know, he's actually not cranky and he's just he's gaining weight he's gaining weight yeah so he gained nine ounces in six days which which is is amazing and like makes me so happy so it makes me feel really good going into our pediatrician appointment tomorrow to be able to a like let them know what my caloric content is of my breast milk but b to also just be like hey like he did gain weight. Like, we are working on it. We have a plan in place. Like, we're doing everything we can. We're not just sitting here, like, twiddling our thumbs about it. And hoping for the best, yeah. So, that was pretty cool. I really... I really felt good after I got that text this morning. Like, I really needed that good. to to help, like, boost. And I had a good pump day today. Like, it was just... It was a good day for breastfeeding and stuff. The simplest things just it's so, make you feel so much better. It's so dumb, but it's true. <laughs> Oh, just keep pushing forward. Yeah, you know, that's parenting, right? It is. I mean, there's so worth you know, like Enzo is on a complete opposite spectrum from Rhett, and Rhett is so much different from Arlo, and Arlo is so much different from Enzo. It's like, isn't that the nature of parenting? Every kid's different. Every kid is different, and you have to parent each kid like individually. Yeah, yeah. You can't. You can't. What's going to work for Enzo is not going to work for Rhett. What's gonna work for Rhett is not gonna work for Arlo you know Mm -hmm. it's crazy we have some exciting stuff coming up this week where uh my cousin's gonna be visiting yeah and we're gonna surprise Enzo Enzo no he's gonna be surprised we had had him on on the podcast when we were in Florida Uh uh-huh yeah he was our first guest speaker yeah um so I'm pretty excited about that because he hasn't met Arlo yet so he's gonna come out and meet Arlo and like hang out with Rhett and Enzo but Enzo doesn't know, and, like, Enzo really likes him. So Enzo's going to be surprised when he wakes up. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, he's going to be excited. It's going to be good. What else we got going on? You had a good interview? Yeah, so I interviewed for a um, something that's going to, like, help my creative side, and that went well. So we'll just see. Like it's it's a it's a cool opportunity in a 
you know, a little side hustle in a realm that I haven't worked in previously. So that that's really cool. I'm excited about that. Yeah, we'll see. Thought, all in all, you've had a really good week. Yeah. You yeah. had some uh, some good gains. You've been doing hard work with uh, weight loss. Yeah, losing weight and getting healthy and trying to live a little bit longer for all these kids and you. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But you're doing great. Like you, you're you're down pant sizes and shirts. And... It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's been a good week. Yeah, we'll see what happens next week. Yeah, no. <laughs> Tomorrow's a new day. But I think we're going to cut it short today, guys. We got uh, some crazy storms going on here in Arizona. And baby's crying. Baby's crying, and everything's just being life as parents. Thank you. Well, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you Have listening. Have a good week. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody, for listening. You can check us out at freezermilk.com or Instagram Freezer Milk Podcast. Until next week, guys. Thanks. Don't forget, parenting is a trip. We are all here on the journey with you together. Thanks so much for listening.